Bad Fish, number 79. Welcome back. Today, we'll be looking at the Gospel of Matthew to see how Jesus warned people of the coming judgment. So let's dive in. Matthew 13 verses 47 to 50. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was cast into the sea and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the men pulled it ashore. Then they sat down and sorted the good fish into containers, but threw the bad away. So will it be at the end of the age, the angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous, and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. My thoughts. Once again, Jesus doesn't pull any punches, he tells it like it is. There are some who are in the kingdom and some who are not. In this age of inclusivism we hear a lot of rhetoric about God being so loving, he couldn't send anyone to hell. The problem is that they fail to recognize the other attribute of God that is as equally strong. And that is justice. God cannot allow sin in his presence. He must either see the sinner through the lens of Christ's blood which was appropriated by a humble and penitent heart. Or, for those who reject his grace, he will cast away from his loving companionship. And he has given ample warning to everyone. For since the creation of the world his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. Romans 1 verse 20 Part of our job as disciple-makers is to deliver the message. That message, the gospel, includes both grace and justice. We cannot change the message or the rules because God has two more attributes that will never change, immutability, the unchangeableness of God. And truth, he cannot lie. There will be a judgment for those who do not turn to him and repent. My story. As I'm writing this my alarm set for 10.02 a.m. went off. I set it to remind me daily to obey Jesus' command to pray for laborers in Luke 10 verse 2. And he was saying to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few, therefore beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. As I pray this prayer, I work around a map in my head or literally stand in front of a world map in my study. I pray for laborers to be sent to Oceania, all of Asia, Europe, Africa, Latin America, North America, and our living room. I also lift up a prayer for the Japanese people who have a special place in my heart. I pray for two reasons. First, because I'm commanded by the Lord Jesus to pray for laborers to be sent into God's harvest fields. And secondly, I want as few bad fish to be cast into the fiery furnace as possible. If I'm really that concerned about people going to hell, I'm not going to try and change the message or the rules. I'm going to share the gospel and try to change the hearts of those who are headed to an eternity of destruction. In addition, I'm going to pray, recruit, and train as many disciples of Jesus to join me in this endeavor. Our Action Plan now we'll look at some ideas on how to help us as disciple-makers warn those who don't know God of the coming judgment. Inject hell and judgment into your gospel presentation. Jesus did. Share the gospel often and train others to do the same. Join me in praying for laborers to be sent into the harvest daily at 10.02. The parable of the fishes serves as a sobering reminder of the final judgment, where the righteous will be separated from the wicked. As disciples, it is our duty to share the gospel truthfully, emphasizing both God's grace and His justice, while fervently praying for more laborers to join us in this mission.